Hi there, I'm David. And I'm Con. And we're back for another episode of Camera Peeps. David. Con, well, we've got this one to ourselves. We are going to talk about a two third inch ENG camera. And it is the PXW X500 from Sony. And this particular camera is mine. And it's part of my lineup of cameras that, you know, that I have to sort of cover all sort of aspects of the work that I do now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I see we've got a few photos of the camera up, up here. So um, wh what's so good about 230 inch cameras, David? We can't really sugarcoat the fact that 230 inch cameras, ENG cameras actually do do some things better than super 35 mil cameras in the, in the corporate world, in the broadcast world. And I know people watching this video might say straight off, strike it off because it's not 4K. There is a 4K version of this camera and it's a PXW-Z450. So it looks the same and it is 4K. So we're just going to use this for, as a real world case study. Mm -hmm. As we can see from the photos here, the form factor is that of a run and gun camera. What makes a camera run and gun in your opinion? What makes a camera run and gun for me is the fact you just open up the, the camera case and you turn it on and it's ready to roll really quickly. Mm. This camera is a step up from the F800, which is still a great workhorse for a lot mm. of people. I find that this camera actually does quite a few things better. Yep. Um, most things it does better. Mm. Uh, the only thing that the F800 does better than this, it probably just boots up quicker. You can actually just turn it on and start recording quicker than this. That's one thing I've noticed. Mm -hmm. But this thing is lighter. Also, I yeah. think the form factor, the fact that you can just chuck it on your shoulder, yeah. it's well balanced. You don't have to uh, make a Frankenstein rig like you can't have to with DSLRs. And I find that despite all the talk about Super 35 and full frame cameras, uh, there is still a need for a two third inch camera in I my couldn't business. agree with you more. Yeah. I still have my two third inch camera because the, the, the ideal for certain jobs, such as? Such as corporate work, such as uh, recording an event, you know, an, an awards night. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I still freelance to the TV stations. Mm -hmm. And of course they're all two third inch cameras. So I mm -hmm. need to be able to slot in to their system, which mm -hmm. this does very well. You know, satellite links, microwave links, SDI out, mm -hmm. straight in. This camera is fantastic mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's just integrated self-contained package mm. no lens servos hanging off or anything mm. it's just it's just there and, and can i say uh, looking at the picture here you you own all these cameras so it's no no longer is it one camera does all you almost need to have a fleet of cameras and pick the right camera for the job is that correct in saying uh, absolutely that? and i mean this may seem a bit of an indulgence it, it is but i use all of these cameras uh, mm. and you know a lot of people will already be familiar with the scenarios we have the live cross TV camera, we have the cinema camera for the interviews, we have the B cameras, the A7S uh, cameras for the sliders and the movies and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yep, there's your full complement. Each camera does it, uh, a particular job better than the other. That's yeah. it. And yeah. I've extended myself a bit to have all of these cameras, mm -hmm. but we know that hiring equipment can add mm -hmm. a couple of hours to your day, getting yep. to the rental facility early pick it up, drop it off at the end of the day. It can easily add a couple of hours to your work day. Yeah, indeed, I totally agree. So what I thought we'd do is let's just go straight into it. We've, yeah. uh, we're recording the uh, output, the menu output of this particular camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to maybe go through some of the things that this camera can do. So if we just go into the operation menu here, uh, we go into this record format and any uh, F800 or, or PDW700 users will be f familiar with um, the highest uh, record rate, uh, bit rate is, is 50 megabits per second. That's right, and, and, the, and the codec is an old MPEG-2 codec yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. So what you can do here is um, you've, you've got the options for all these uh, contemporary, if you like, Sony codecs and, and that one there, that's the 100 megabits Mm -hmm. per second uh, codec. Yeah, and that's an intra-frame codec and that's based on the H.264 algorithms or, or derivative of that that newer sort of okay. uh, algorithm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But you know, people just want to know what are the numbers? You mm -hmm. know, how fast does a car get to 60 miles an hour? People just want to know, you know, how many megabits mm -hmm. per second is that? And you just say it's 100 meg megabits mm -hmm. per second. Yeah. Um, but another thing that this camera does or has is this codec here. 
Now this oh, is... Oh, that looks familiar. This is the old um, HD cam codec, mm -hmm. or a variation of the old yeah, HD cam. So it's um, uh, HD cam SR light, so it means it's only 180 megabits, not 400 or 800 megabits, like the old HD cam SR, but, what but, HD cam codec was, yeah. But that's still not bad yeah. for an ENG camera. Oh, definitely, because the XAVC-I was 100 megabits. This gives you a bit mm. more data. So what's the big deal about data? The more data, the better quality, is that correct? The better quality and... Uh, artifacts, all those sort of issues. Mm -hmm. So one thing about having the XAVC codec, or the higher uh, bitrate records, is yep. we can actually do slow-mo. Okay, how, how, how high can you go? 120 frames. That's fantastic. That's and, and is that in the XAVC-I codec, or do you have to drop codecs to get to that? Uh, no, the XAVC codec. Wow, and, and that's impressive. Yeah, it's great. But yeah. in the real world, uh, if someone says, you know, you need to, we need to do some sports stuff, um, we, in the past, it was Super 35, big lenses, yes. bad zooms. I mean, great zooms, but, you know, you, you big, can do a type. Heavy, yeah, big, and heavy, expensive to rent. Yeah. yeah. And this scenario here is, uh, this, was, this was test footage, but mm. this is real world stuff, you know. So, just, so you're at a cricket match here, I see? Yeah, just my yeah. old school, actually. But um, mm. they kindly gave me permission to come and film their, their match. But, you know, this is on the boundary line, you know. I'm, I'm on the boundary line. The old, the classic uh, news 22 times uh, lens with a yeah, two times extender, and I'm able to uh, just be on the boundary line and getting you know really good ISO footage. Mm. So another advantage of doing the slow mo uh, on the two third inch camera, you can zoom right in t t to the action there in the middle of the field with a you know a 22 times uh, zoom, and it's not big or heavy and. Uh, the 213 sensor allows you to do that, doesn't it? That's right. And also having the zoom command, oh, here, yes. you're totally comfortable. You mm -hmm. know, you're just the pan handle. You, you, the ergonomics are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You can crash zoom, pull wide. Because mm. in the past, you know, we've really had the only option of Super 35 cameras to do that. And, and the cinema lenses, or, or if you attempt to do it on a DSLR lens, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be crazy. Yeah. Well, you're not going to get all the way into the middle of the field with a 70 to 200 Canon lens, I don't, no. I don't think. Not tight enough no, and as you can with this lens. And you won't be able to follow the action as you can, you know, when you have a zoom command. See, that's another advantage of these ENG lenses, ENG cameras, the fact that you can uh, plug in zoom demands. And I know you can do that with cabrios on 35mm cameras, but, you know... Um, uh, the focal lengths, because of the larger sensor, you, you, the lenses become bigger, heavier, mm. more expensive to yeah. be able to get the same reach as the smaller yeah. 22 times. But also, in, in the uh, two third inch camera world, I mean, you have to remember, any, uh, those of us who have accessorised our, our Super 35 rigs, we know it's just endless, mm. buying servo motors, and of course in there, there is three motors. Oh, that's right. In incorporated. Yeah. There's the iris, the zoom, and, and the focus, and mm. the interfaces are all there just to connect straight to um, CCU uh, consoles. Mm. Um, the, you know, the, the TDs can make their adjustments. You know, these, mm. it's already built in. No one talks about it. Mm. It's just that you can't see it. Because, uh, let's face it, the, this form factor of camera was the original run-and-gun camera. Yeah. It was made so you can turn it on, power it up quickly, shoot anything that happened in front of you quickly and efficiently. Mm. Yeah, and it's funny that the camera behind me there is over 30 years old. It's not a camcorder, it's just a camera, but it's interesting if you sort of look at it, mm. the white balance switch is still there, the VTR switch is still there. Yep. A little bit different here, the gain is there, and it's just slightly different, but in essence, it's the, it's the same. So the form factor okay. hasn't really changed much. They sort of got it right, just refined it yeah. in, in small steps. Yeah, the viewfinders are the same, and you know, and that's another thing about uh, a two third inch camera. You know, the, these viewfinders are fantastic because in these these conditions, uh, you know, if you're working early morning, the sun's in your face. Uh, you know, you, you need a good viewfinder. The, the viewfinder mm. on a camera, you know, when you're working in broadcast, particularly, mm. it's it's like a temple for your eye. Yes, yes. The, every bit of information is in there. The composition, the the camera settings, mm. the, the color temperature, everything is there. This yep. is so 
critical. So a lot of the cameramen really relied on their viewfinders. And, you know, if they ever went to someone else's camera and their viewfinder was set mm. up differently on, or inferior or a cheaper version, mm. it could really throw you because, mm. you know, once you got to know your viewfinder and its settings and, and stuff, it was that, like... Uh, that's me. I still use black and white viewfinder. Oh, really? And you haven't gone colour. Why is that? I haven't. I mean, they're good. The black and white viewfinder still does some things better mm. than a colour viewfinder. I'm not going to go into it, uh, but also a high-end colour viewfinder is upwards of 10,000 Aussie oh. dollars. So what's a black and white viewfinder? Two, three grand or four grand? I think it's about four. Four, yeah. okay. But, um, but f for me, from a business perspective, yeah. uh, you know, $10,000 will buy me another FS5 or yeah. update another camera or buy me another lens. So also with this camera, the LCD screen on the side here, mm. those of us familiar with the 800s and the 700s, mm. was pretty grainy, pretty ordinary. This is actually a, a great Yeah, so they LCD improved the, uh, that rear LCD, because I remember on the XD Cam 800s, you put it's, it on, on, on the picture and it was mm. so soft, yeah. it was hardly usable. No, this, is, know, this is fantastic. And, and so if you have um, a client who's in tow, um, I just don't do the... You yeah. know, mounting a monitor up here, there's, there's just no need. It's just mm. extra weight. It's more connections. It's more batteries. Mm. This is good enough for them to quickly have a look yeah. at what the shot is. Yeah, yeah. review yeah. review shots, whatever. So yeah. that that's another great thing about this camera. Okay, so while we're on this page here, the the record function um, setting here. Uh, if we go down to simultaneous record, that's a mm -hmm. feature now that's uh, standard in in the FS5, I think. But basically, I can record to both. S by S cards at the same time. So you do an instant backup. Absolutely, yeah. yeah which yeah. is handy sometimes uh, if you know you can't data wrangle the card mm. straight away and you want to make sure you've got two copies. You have to catch a flight straight after yeah. you shoot. There's no time to data wrangle. Yeah. At least you know you've got two copies. Yeah, yeah. And, and anecdotally speaking, I've never had a problem. Yeah. I've never yeah. had a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'll just move on in the menu here. This is another interesting um, thing about this camera. Proxy recording mode. Mm -hmm. um, in the... Um, 700s and the 800s, uh, there was no option for bit rates. Mm -hmm. On this particular camera, I can actually record, I have actually have some options, and uh, I leave mine set at this 9 megabits per mm -hmm. second yep. bit rate, and the quality in playback is absolutely fine. Now, mm. that's been my emergency. I've, I've used it once. Mm. And it was my own job. It was my. It was actually one of our jobs, and I, mm. I had to um, format a card that I had back, hadn't backed up some of our footage on. It was no big mm. deal. And then I thought we'll have to reshoot it. And then it dawned on me, no, we've got the proxies. And that was good enough to that use. It was good enough yeah. for the for the website. Yeah. So um, that is totally fine. And, and another um, great use for this uh, high high quality proxy is uh, media training. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. I, I've done a bit of media training and I struggle to give them what they want and that is a file they can take away with them and play on PCs because my problem is I can do proxy files but their mm. .mobs, not MP4s. No, and this when I'm, when I'm packing up after a media mm. training session, it's just simply laptop Yep. and the SD card goes in and just yep. copy the file over to the USB stick for each, each client, each person who's been trained. Yeah. And the time that takes... Is, is it's not a great amount of time. And yeah, by the time nine I megabits, up, the file sizes aren't too too big. No, and they walk away, and uh, they can play it on their can, PC they can or play Mac. On their PC, yeah. yeah. So I find that a, a really interesting. Well, I think anyone who does a lot of media training, that alone uh, says to me, a must have. Well, look, uh, we used to drag in any camera. Well, we used to drag DVD recorders up, and that was another road case. And, and I'm sure you remember VHS recorders. No, I, do. I wasn't going to mention it, but, <laughs> but, it, but it was. But even the DVD recorder, DVD recorder, you know, the amount of uh, plugs and, and cables, you know, and XLR, the sound. XLR to RCA, and yeah, very and complicated, then, and form uh, formatting the the DVDs at the end of the job. Oh, and, that and, too. I've forgotten about that. And then that's that's fine. But of course, you know, most laptops don't have. Um, DVD. That's right. They're, anymore. they're a gone, yeah. gone thing. So you know this this proxy uh, um, quality is fantastic, and That's and, and I do deal. well. It serves two purposes to me. One, it's an emergency backup yep. for the footage if yep. something happened to the SBS cards, and it's quite a usable um, mm. picture quality for you know internet or web. 
footage or, mm. or the media training. Or, 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 or if you wanted, if you're overseas and you're doing a story and you quickly want to send back to the station, mm. you know, a low, low, um, lo, low size footage mm. for them to to use mm. that you can upload through your hotel internet. Yeah, you you do that rather than your your big files. Well, I think also with those lower bit rate options, which mm. we'll get onto a bit later, um, this camera does stream, but we'll talk oh. about. Oh, wow. We'll talk about that later, and I think that's um, a function of this camera. If if the newsrooms were, say, to switch over from their disc-based cameras mm. um, to this particular model, mm. um, then they are going to have a lot more options of just transferring proxy files from the, the mobile phone app. Well, I know a couple of guys who uh, do stringer work around Melbourne, and they've invested in these little camcorders. Mm. I think JVC, one, one comes to mind. Mm that has, you can plug in the, that streaming dongle directly mm. into it and it can stream live. Well, there's the dongle. Okay, That's, so this camera will do it This as will well. do it, yeah. Well, there you go. We, we'll talk about that in another video. Yeah. Um, but we're going to need a bit of help from Sony on that one. There is a mm. base station for this camera. I think it's the PWS100 or something. That could be wrong, but it's a, it's a base station which mm -hmm. would go in the server rack, mm -hmm. you know, if the news exchange or, or at the back of master control or whatever. Yep. That stuff's still unfolding, but this that's another thing that makes this camera um, a good workhorse and yep. something, a, a camera that you can actually have for a little while, mm -hmm. you know, for a few years, because we want to get some And it makes it versatile. You can use it in ENG, news, mm. corporate, uh, media training, uh, uh, lots of different uses, well, which is handy. You know, when you're investing in a camera, you want it to be able to do as many jobs as possible. Yeah, look, I love this camera, and I know everyone talks about Super 35, and of course the latest thing now is the Venice. That's not my world, but certainly mm. it's Alexas, a mirrors, it's F5s, F55s, and of course you know the Panasonic mm -hmm. uh, equivalents of all those cameras. And no one talks about these cameras. But from a business point of view, if you are a freelance camera person, mm. um, you know you have to guide your clients through. You know what's the best tool for the job. For the job, and yeah. let's face it, you know, on an awards night or a mm. speech or a conference that runs for two days, you know, I'm, a, I'm afraid these cameras do it better. Well, he, here's a photo, for example, of um, uh, you at a venue at a hotel. You're situated in the back of the room mm. and you have to film someone at a lectern at the other end of mm. the room. You know, it's very hard to do uh, with the 30, Super 35mm sensor camera or yeah. a full frame sensor camera on the DSLR. Yeah, and on this camera, I don't give it a second thought. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I'm up on the riser at the back of the room and I've got the 22 times lens and the, and the zoom command and yeah. you can do the, you know, the locked off speeches or, you know, you can just make the subtle moves when someone comes up to the stage or mm -hmm. they change speakers or someone comes up to collect their award and it's all just super smooth. Exactly, and you can plug audio directly into it. Easy, And you deal up. with the guys, you know, the AV guys, mm -hmm. you know, internally and they're, you know, you know, that's another thing. You might supply the feed, uh, the vision to the big screen or whatever, you know. That's right. And I've had a situation where I turned up at an event. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, they weren't seeing my signal. And, of course, it turned out the projector was 720. Not 1080. Not 1080. And it's yeah. great. No problems. Just go into the menu, switch it over. There it is, mm. you know. Yeah, 720, 50p. Yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 So in this scenario here, uh, a lot of people will be familiar with this, you know, the hotel uh, space. Uh, and I had uh, this as the as for the tight shot following the action, people coming up on the stage, rolling mm. on the speeches, yep. Q and A in the audience. You oh, know really? when the AV okay. people you know rush out to um, you mm -hmm. know with a radio hand mic mm -hmm. for people's questions, etc. Yep. Uh, and I had the FS5 locked off on a wide shot, mm -hmm. so that was that would cover me when I'd reframe for this. So it's a great thing about this PXW range of cameras. You know the FS5 on the um, waveform monitor and vector scope they they actually match they actually come quite close oh, here's an example here so you you've actually taken to a technician and got him to line up the cameras mm, yeah yeah and here's the proof in the pudding he's actually used a uh, a device to overlay both both waveforms of both cameras here's a vector scope so as w there's proof in the pudding there how well they've been able to, to match both cameras that's amazing yeah I'm, i think that's incredible and mm. and it suits me once again at those events uh, and you can tell your client, I'll go, well, look, we can have two cameras, but we can, um, you know, do it at, at a budget, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's a great result at the end and mm -hmm. you can um, cut out the, 
the rep the repos with the main camera you've always got that wide shot too mm. and it's not a huge jump in the edit it's not like the colors are changing you know yeah. the, the goal see anytime you do a multi-camera that's the biggest challenge is having the shots match mm. um, and the easiest way to do that is use the same cameras the mm. same sensors even the same lenses because mm. even if you have the same cam cameras but one's uh, a different mm. make to the other mm. That can affect the matching. Yeah. Would you agree? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I just know I can go to those jobs and I, there's a lot of things I don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. You know, the cameras are just there, you know. Okay, so look, I'll just go back to, in the menu here. We're going to skip past paint. Mm -hmm. um, that's another video in itself. Yeah, you really got to know what you're doing in there. Otherwise, you can really affect the image if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and this video is about, you know, what this camera, it's just some of the real world practical things about this camera and this form factor the two yeah. inch form factor yes and also con you may notice that the menu structure in this camera is very similar to the f5 and the it f55 is, isn't it? Yeah. so if you ha do have both cameras it's it's great because it, it does make it easy mm. when you're using um one camera one day and another camera the next so I'll just come down here to um audio yep uh we won't dwell on here too long but it's another thing that i really love about this camera what's that it actually has uh, the audio pots for channel three and channel four. Yeah, as we can see here in That's the photo, a close up in the photo. In, yeah. in the f photo. So uh, we can assign radio. Mic it just gives you a lot, a lot more options, um, just mm -hmm. breaking away from um, just the auto only. There was no option. It was just sort well, of Well, some uh, even 230 inch cameras, channels three and four are auto only option mm. in the menu yeah you don't even get pots like no. you do here to control them that's no. that's pretty good if you go into the audio menu um there's there's a great range of adjustments so having control over uh channel three and four does make it interesting mm. uh especially i keep talking about that that uh corporate event where mm. there's uh there might be two lecterns one camera left one camera right plus there's question and answers from the audience so we can take those um, four individual channels mm. and have different levels and not actually have to record the mix. What? So you would record all those four channels on that one camera? On that one camera. How do you do it? How we do it. Okay. Most cameras only have two XLR inputs. Yeah, well I've had uh, this um, cable custom made. Yep. So it's a five pin. Oh, so you're plugging into the mic input at the front. Right, so what I do is oh. unplug the, uh, the camera mic. Yep. Plug this guy in. Yep, the five pin uh, male end. Yeah. So that's normally where your stereo mic would plug into. Correct. And that's why it's five pins. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then obviously I would have longer cables on there. Yep. But then that gives you two, mm -hmm. your two extra, um, or channel three and four. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, it's also great if, um, you know, you have a panel discussion or something, mm -hmm. everyone just has lapel mics on. Yep. And if you are, um, going through microwave links or satellite uplinks where uh, mm -hmm. th there are all the audio channels embedded, it's great at the other end. Um, mm -hmm. They can de embed the audio and actually mm -hmm. mix it themselves and not yep. um, get what they're given. And if you wanted to, uh, once again, I have this as we've seen in other videos. What's that? Well, this is the Sony uh, bracket mm -hmm. to so I can get that um, receiver into there oh. onto the F5, but the the um, the layout on the back here accommodates this particular bracket. So if you really wanted to, you mm. could actually have four Sony radio mics. Ah, to the slot in uh, into the body there, plus, plus another, that one. another dual receiver on the back. On the back, oh, wow. that's that's an option. I don't have two receivers, but, yeah. it, is, but it is an audio option. So uh, speaking of slot in uh, audio receivers, that's another thing about this form factor, that mm. it, rather than having an external thing that's longer, bigger, and you know, cables running out of something, you've got this neat form factor of the dual receiver mm. going straight into the body, talking directly to the menu of the camera. Yeah. And and it's this this streamlined camera that we're talking almost yeah, I think aerodynamics. It's just mm. it's just smooth. Mm. You know, you can walk through doorways, you can walk through things aren't going to catch. HDMI cables aren't going to pop mm. out when this pressure. It's just integrated, it's just self contained and you know that's what mm. I love about it. And if there is a problem mm. somewhere um, it's just a lot easier to, to find the fault because mm. you just everything's familiar, everything's internal. Mm. You know, you don't have to um, you don't have to reset servo motors. It's just mm. self-contained, and I love yeah. it. 
the, the, the least amount of things that can go wrong on the shoot, mm. the, the better for all of us, yeah. Well, I did a job recently where I had to do promos mm -hmm. and TVCs, and then the following day, connected to that job, um, was a public event where this person was there, and I used the F5 one day, and I used this the next, and, and it was a major event. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you could have offered me any, any high-end camera, the most expensive Zeiss or Cook lenses, mm. I would not have swapped it for this because mm. it's the best thing when you're in the pack, you know, and, and yep. it's rock and roll, you know, mm. when the celebrity, you know, is moving and it's just mm. police and security guards and everything, you, you just get in there amongst, amongst them and, you know, having this sort of bigger form factor, you know, they kind of know, well, yeah, he must be the... The media. He must be the, the real, real the real thing, you know. <laughs> he's the real thing. Um, but you know, once again, when you go through those, um, you know, crowds and things, you mm. know, that's when you know cables can fall out, or you know, if, if you had a you know an external recorder on your, mm. and which you probably have to power separately. Oh, the whole know, thing. Because that's another thing. These cameras, uh, I guess, offer two D taps: one at the front, and one at the back of the plate. So you could power yeah. stuff directly. Yeah, on. yeah, and it has, it does have one Hirose uh, twelve volt. Oh, that for radio mics. Yeah, or something and like and that. that's services certainly the, the powering the Sony mm -hmm. one. We get another page uh, with the audio, and it's about the you know the, I guess the current range of um, digital microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a whole page here, um, and w this could be another video in itself. So we're not going to talk about it a lot other than mm. that they do interact, the, the transmitters and the receivers do interact, share um, some of the uh, information, battery levels and things. So that and in the viewfinder here, mm. I get the RF level. And so that means that... That's great. That's they have all that information at, at your eyeball or fingertips. Yeah. And some people might say, why? I go, well, I can tell you why. Because if you do end up at a major event mm. where there's an OB and there's other media... Uh, there will be the, quite possibly a clash of frequencies. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, when the batteries, the AA batteries start going flat in mm. the transmitters, it starts it starts blinking. Oh, here. really? Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic yeah, it feature. Is really, it is really good. Because you can be caught out the worst time yeah. uh, having transmitter uh, batteries on the Talon go flat. Yeah. yeah. That's another great um, feature of this camera. Yeah, that, most definitely. Okay, so as we go, just go through the menu, we'll just skip over some things. APR, we're familiar with that, the dead pixels. Um, oh, no, I don't know what APR is. What is APR? Don't you know? No. Oh, okay, right. No, please educate me. Oh, okay, right. Um, APR, this mm -hmm. is, uh, it's an acronym. It's yep. a Sony acronym, and I can't Four. remember. It's something like, uh, something pixel replacement or something. Refresh. Or something like that, yeah. So it's probably not important that you remember what it stands for. It's probably important that you know how to find this in the menu because it is important. So if you are at, at um, it's more the evening that you noticed all dark situations, mm. the camera's been on for, once the camera warms up, then the dead pixels. Start, dead pixels start to expose Whoa. themselves, and if you and you know you might be on plus three or plus six oh, gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The higher the gain, the more obvious they are. Mm. Um, I've had them pop up when you least expect it. I've I've you know hidden them. I've I've altered my framing just to sort of hide <laughs> them, you know, in a shirt or something. Yeah. But sometimes if you know if someone's if you're wearing a dark top, mm. it, it could be obvious. And because yep. uh, they usually are white, bright. It's a white dot thing, yeah. And and to yeah. me, uh, the pixel thing is basically a nightmare for me because <sighs> in the early days of the CC, I had a lot of problems with with dead pixels, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how if people can relate to that or not. But there was, I think, you had to black balance or something, or yeah. you actually had to take it to the Sony technicians. And didn't they used to laser burn it out? I or don't something? know what yeah. they did, or they yeah. masked them somehow, masked and you'd them. get it back. But fortunately, this function here, if if I get uh, if I notice the dead pixel, mm -hmm. uh, this is the one, and you just go into there and you basically hit. I won't do it because it yeah. takes a few seconds. Yeah. Uh, and it's a little process, you know, a little timing thing, and then the next thing it says APR completed, I think, and then voila, the dead pixel's gone. Does it work? Oh, absolutely. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So to to test this, to test a camera for dead pixels. Yeah. Um, as I say, I ha I have a particular eye for it because mm. I've had some shockers with mm. um, dead pixels, uh, and they're probably more noticeable in a black and white viewfinder. Yep, yep. 
and uh, when the camera is really warm, when it's mm. been on for a long time, and certainly when gain goes in, mm. um, they start to expose themselves. Yep. And, and and is this a problem of just two thirteen sensors, or is it a problem of all sensors? Well, F five users will know, um, be familiar with. You know, just about every time you turn the thing on, it says execute APR. Is that what that means? Yeah, that's what that means. Oh, all this time yeah. I had no idea what that yeah. meant. <laughs> yeah. And, and people ask me, go, oh, I don't know, just. Say oh, yes. is that right? Yeah, I had no idea okay. that that's what APR yeah, is. Yeah, that's what it is. You're right. Every time you flick it on, it, mm. it asks you to do it. Yeah, and once it warms up and it, the camera sort of says, no, it's it's fine. So, so that's what APR that's what means, is. Yeah, and that's why when it says, uh, you know, close, cap the lens, you yeah. have to do it. And that's another trick if you are on a cinema lens. Yeah. Uh, it, actually, the iris doesn't close completely. No, that's so, the difference between an E and G yeah. lens. The cabrios will do it, I believe, because oh, okay. the cabrios are a, a, a hybrid of cinema lens yeah. And uh, E and G lens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I noticed on a cinema lens I was using the other yeah, day, it no. didn't it didn't cap off, no, and you would right. have to put on. So that's what that's about. I, so I didn't realise that was I uncommon did not knowledge. I know that. Yeah. Oh no, no, uh. I, I know that, and that's why when I see that menu come up and I thought, oh, that message come up, we all know. Yeah. So why do, why does the camera on the F5 ask you to do that? It does it detect a dead pixel, or is it doing it just to be well, on the safe side? Well, I guess it does detect it. Oh, uh, wow. yeah. So every time I've seen it come on, it's detected a dead pixel. Yeah, and then as the camera warms up, it must say, okay, it's gone, it's warmed up. I, but I, I have to admit, I'm master of noticing dead pixels. I'll be, I'll be watching um, the you know, the TV, even some studio cameras, I notice them. Yeah? Yeah, big studio cameras. Yeah, to me, it's just, it's a nightmare. And Wow, there you go, I've learned something. Okay.